Hello everyone! I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm so glad to finally talk to all of you again um, because I haven't filmed anything since my wrap up. I, I haven't been reading anything. Oh. And yesterday was the first day that I danced this year. I went back to school and my body is in like so much pain right now. Like every single inch of my body is in pain except for like these fingers uh, and the eyeballs that I have. So I will spend today reading and I'm doing like a pocket book reading vlog. So it's just going to be like today pretty much. But first I want to talk about some things that I'm really excited about. I got like a little trans symbol tattoo. I know, I'm just like, I'm so in love with it. It's just, I've been like struggling with like a lot of things when it comes to like being trans and, and non-binary like in my life lately. And I, it's, it's like the longer I spend like being out as trans, the more I see how much transphobia it is. And whenever I try to um, express my opinions about it, there's like, no understanding and it's been like extremely frustrating and like a lot of things so I've just been trying the best in my life to like seek the gender euphoria or like talk to other queer people and so on what was it called Monday I went to like a queer friend speed dating meeting and it was so fun and it's like oh it was so nice to just like be with people again and like talk to people and the room was just like so diverse and lovely and it was just like such a great time and I woke up with like five cold sores on my mouth that morning which was just unfortunate and all my like my mom was like I can't believe you still went and I'm like of course I still went like who would I be if I like thought that my cold sores were gonna stop me from like meeting people yeah that's unfortunate but they're healing now I think it was Amanda from Butch Poetics um, they recommended like a trans podcast like a Norwegian trans po podcast called like Trans Norway and oh my god it is so good I wish I could recommend it to everyone so like everyone can listen to it but obviously it's in Norwegian if you do speak Norwegian like I just really recommend it it's been super super healing for me like wow like really healing otherwise like find other podcasts I've been listening to like talks that Rosalind Montoya and Ezra Michelle did on stereo I think and there's like just so many like trans and queer podcasts like it's been very healing for me but I'll, I'll bring it back in and I got my tattoo two days ago which just felt like so so good like yes so today we're gonna do something that is like mildly related to all of that and let's get back into reading and reading these three books so I have picked up these for a while now and I've been planning to do this vlog for a really long time and I just have been not in the reading mood but today we're gonna read these three books um this is I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya this is pocketbook clearly but Vivek Shreya is a trans woman and I relate to the sentiment I am also scared of men <laughs> I'm excited to read this and Vivek Shreya is like famous for another book, but I don't know which which one. So I'll, I'll be more informed next time I catch up with you. And then this one, which is obviously very famous, probably the most famous in this like pocketbook collective. This is Beyond the Biner Gender Binary by Alok Vaid Menon. I mean, I've been wanting to read this for a really long time. Then it's How to Stay Sane in an Age of Division by Alif Shafak. She is like a feminist activist and she's half Turkish, half British, I believe, grew up in France. And this, I just got like very attracted to the title, what it says in the cover. And ours is the age of contagious anxiety. We feel overwhelmed by the events around us, by injustice, by suffering, by an endless feeling of crisis. I related to the, just like that first sentence. So I was like, okay, I need to read this book because this is definitely something that I've been feeling. After talking for five minutes, let's actually read these today. <laughs> Okay, I'm on page like 60 out of 84 
and I am really enjoying it so far. It's very relatable and there's so many amazing quotes but it's also heartbreaking to read what Vivek went through and it's heartbreaking to know that like so many femme people in the world or most of us go through that same process or like experiences that are similar and it's yeah it's heartbreaking but also healing to read about it yeah so it's divided into like an introduction essay and then um, a you essay and then now I'm gonna start the me essay so it's kind of like written to certain people as I'm guessing this last part is gonna like be Vivek writing to herself which I think is gonna be like the most healing part I hope Vivek is happy I just <sighs> but it's really good so far oh my god I just want to share this one quote or paragraph that I think is just <sighs> I think it's very key um I have always been disturbed by this transition, by the reality that often the only way to capture someone's attention and to encourage them to recognize their own internal biases and to work to alter them is to confront them with sensational stories of suffering. Why is my humanity only seen or cared about when I share the ways in which I have been victimized and violated? <sighs> that like hit hard. I think when it comes to marginalized groups being respected, there is something about the comfort of those that are not in that marginalized group being prioritized. There is something about the display of the marginalized people's suffering of being representational of why they should be treated or respected well. There is something about people always having to understand to respect someone that I just find like all of that is just so d disgusting. Oh my god, I just, there are some parts in this, I feel like this was just really good, and I want to share, that's all. Tears, they're coming. I'm okay. Oh my god, I finished I'm Afraid of Men by Victoria. It was so good, there was definitely middle parts where I was like hesitant, but I'm like, okay, this is more like four star. But then the ending came and I just like cried so much. Like it was just okay. It was so good. Like I think it was just very healing. I think like <laughs> oh my god, my tears. I think I want to read you so many quotes that I just loved, but I'm not gonna because it's so short and I think because it's so short, like the progression that Vivek is trying to like pull us through this journey is like you have to go, you know, through the journey to like really let those quotes have an impact and if I just tell them to you, like I don't think it's gonna be the same and I want to like honor her work um, by just telling you to read it. It was like very powerful for me. Um, okay, I'm just gonna cry for a bit now. <laughs> it's fine. I'm good. Oh, I should've brought my mic. So I went out for some like lunch dinner-ish thing and I noticed I got a package in the mail. And I think this is a comic that was recommended by Sean from Past Storytime and you know I love my comics so yes this is the one my boyfriend's a bear um, it's not relevant for this vlog but I've heard really great things about this one so I'm excited to check it out also my outfit is really cool today but yeah bestiality we we love it <laughs> as long as it's cute <laughs> yes yeah, so I'm gonna eat some lunch slash dinner now and I'm gonna read my next book which is oh, How to Stay Sane in an Age of Division. I don't want to leave the biggest book to last, so I'm going to start this now. And it's like 17 degrees, which is quite hot to be Denmark. And I'm really excited about it. So I just want to enjoy the weather.
I'm home again and I'm like more than halfway through this book. I'm starting a new chapter called Anxiety and I've also been listening to the book Care Work which is just extraordinary and wonderful and I was gonna have a whole rant about trauma and ableism but like as I was talking through it in my head I was like wow this is like very important to me and like I was taking a lot of mental steps in my head and I was like okay I'll just talk about it and then I sat in front of the camera I'm like this is not something I'm ready for so that's for another day but this book I am not feeling like it's very extraordinary at the moment it does definitely talk about why we're becoming so divided with like social media mental health and a little bit of like these things and it is written post uh pandemic which is great but i feel it's also not digging so deeply like after reading you know like how to do nothing or even braving the wilderness this is like i guess another take on those topics but just because i've read about it before it doesn't become as eye-opening for me and i feel like I'm, I'm already thinking about these things quite a lot um and it's not really touching me or engaging me in like the same way that those books do but i do like about I do like that this book talks about like identity and also queer stuff and whatever but not like in love with it i finished this one did i talk about it did i talk about it how to stay sane in an age of division. I think this is a very important book. I am really glad I read it. It was concise. In theory, I think this book could have like been digging a little bit deeper because I think there's more to say on the subject. Um, but I really enjoyed it for what it is. And if you haven't read about like this stuff before, I highly recommend it. There was some good quotes. Like I highlighted quite a lot of things. I also think like all these three books have like a lot in common. Um, and I just started Beyond the Gender Binary by Alouk and I'm already highlighting so much. Like, I do not have the luxury of being. I'm only seen as doing. As if my gender is something that is being done to them and not something that belongs to me. One time I had a waiter come up to me and ask if this was my Halloween costume when I was sitting at a table wearing a skirt. It's a surreal experience to have your personhood be reduced to a prop. The assumption is that being a masculine man or feminine woman is normal and that being us is an accessory. Like if you remove our clothing, our makeup and our pronouns, underneath the surface, we are just men and women playing dress up. The scrutiny on our bodies distracts us from what's really going on here, control. The emphasis on our appearance distracts us from real focus, power. At a fundamental level, we are still having to argue for the very ability to exist. Like, everything a look is right is just really hitting me hard. And, like, I wanted to say this for last because it's probably going to be the easiest read. But now I'm like, do I have the emotional capacity to, like, really reflect on this today? Did I tell you? I, a man, like, visually pointed at me and laughed for the way I dress when I just walked out. And I'm not even, like a trans woman of color, you know, like, I can't even imagine. I've also been scared for my life because of the way I dress. And here it says, Our existence is made into a matter of opinion, as if our genders are debatable, and that's just who we are. Um, I think especially with non-binary, there is very much this essence that I am choosing <laughs> to be this, uh, being non-binary, but being non-binary for me is very much like asking a cis woman or cis man, like, why are you a woman? Why are you a man? Like, it's just obvious, right? Like, <laughs> there is no, like, deeper, um, really political decision to be this way. Like, this is just how I was born. Like, I don't know what it's like to be a woman because I've never been a woman. Like, my mom said uh, a while ago, like, when I was, if I was born today or if non-binary existed when I was young then I probably would have been a non-binary because I was very like tomboy -y. and saying stuff like that it's just like misunderstanding everything and it's sort of like a microaggression because it makes it a choice which it is not but yes I'll continue reading I mean I'm literally on page like 17. <laughs> Thank you.
I just finished Beyond the Gender Binary. I really liked it. I highlighted a lot, very much actually. Towards the end, I actually highlighted uh, an entire page <laughs> that I want to read to you. I think my favorite part is at the end. First, like they talk about their journey and how they came to like be at, I'm holding the camera with my feet right now. That's why it looks weird. And then a look goes on to talk about arguments that people use against non-conforming people or non-binary people, non-gender, no, gender non-conforming people. And then they end by saying this, what you begin to notice is having these conversations is that they accuse us of doing the very thing that they are doing to us. They say that we are erasing them as they actively erase the long history of cultures outside the Western gender binary. They say that we are making things up as they invent hundreds of new laws to legislate us out of existence. They say that we are pretending as they recite the scripts about gender they have been taught. They say that we are attacking them as hate crimes against trans and gender nonconforming people increase. This is how power works. It makes the actual people experiencing violence seem like a threat. Moving from a place of fear leads us to make harmful assumptions about one another. In our fear, we treat other people's identities as if they are something that they are doing to us and not something that just exists. I just thought that was very powerful. Also, Beyond the Gender Binary reminded me of like some songs that have been helping me through this this um, societal uh, gender shit. Um, <laughs> Men of My Dreams by Esra. I Don't Know If I'm a Boy by Blue Foster. Chaotic Gender Neutral by Murder Person for Hire. Gender is Boring by She, Her, Hers. I Wish I Were a Boy by MJ. Dot. Just a shout out. So I definitely thought this was very powerful, but I think I'm a bit biased because I've been following a look on Instagram for so long now and I've seen like all their informative like infographics. I've pretty watched every single live show they have ever had. Um, but I feel like in some of Alok's lives, they really go into deeper stuff. And it's, I think this pocketbook collective, they're actually YA, which is something I heard recently. So I think there is a lot to be talked about here. I think there is more depth to be had, but this is just a very basic, um, great overview. Loved it, but even though I felt very seen, and I feel like this is very important, it didn't like emotionally touch me the way that uh, Vivek Shreya's did, but I also think that wasn't the purpose. Like things, things like this as a trans non-binary person is very normal. And like, I have these discussions with like every single time I have to come out come out to someone, which is like every single time I meet a new person, I constantly face like this sort of discrimination. I like go through this in my life all the time. And clearly it is very different depending on your own experience, like your different like sectionalities, intersectionalities, like it's very different for me than it is for a look because of like a various things obviously but I think a lot of it was just something that maybe I didn't need to read about in a way like this isn't necessary for me I think it could be much more helpful for someone else um, and maybe even if I had read this like earlier in my journey it would have been more enlightening but this was just very sweet and I still loved it <laughs> Today has been very healing for me. Let's start with that. I felt like these all do have something in common. And I talked, I had like a two hour almost call with my best friend. She lives in London now and she moved like a couple months ago. And so I have struggled also because of that, because I've been missing her a lot. Yeah, we finally talked today and she's talking about like this vibrational shift, the change we're going through right now. And I feel like a lot of people are on the same path. And these are I like really touching on that shift, like moving, protesting or moving away from the patriarchy in itself. And it's very connected to what all of these books have to say. So I think these are very connected. I loved reading them all after each other because there is like an essence of something that is there. And sometimes the more I read about social justice issues, I feel like I'm, I'm peeling away at an onion and I have the sensation that I'm going to get closer and closer to a truth but I'm slowly starting to realize there is no truth there's always like layers to be peeled like of a never-ending onion 
Um, and it's not scary. It is actually very beautiful and very exciting. And yeah, like on this journey I'm in, I'm just like feeling like my mind is getting blown like all the time. Like I'm having like new realizations every day and it's like a lot. Also, I'm going through like a manic episodes, but maybe that's why. And uh, watch me be depressed in two months. Okay. <laughs> Loved it. Thank you for joining me in this vlog. It was wonderful little daily 12 hour, however long this was, journey with me. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a really an amazing day. Talk to me in the comments and I'll chat with you guys soon. Bye!